10 Cool Facts About Water Striders Did you know these insects are actually heavier than water? Ordinarily, objects with a greater density than water should sink, just like metals would. However, water striders defy this physical law by combining several brilliant adaptations. Welcome to Animal Science TV! Fact 10. Jesus Bugs and Shadows Adult water striders are classified as aquatic insects, but they don't actually live in the water. Instead, they literally walk on top of it and have earned the nickname Jesus Bug. As you can see in this image, a water strider is physically bending the water itself into six dimples around its limbs. In turn, this curved water bends light just like a magnifying glass. Shadows are cast on the substrate below. In fact, the easiest way to spot a wild water strider is to go down to your local pond, puddle, or vernal pool and keep an eye out for these signature dancing shadows. Nine. Surface Tension Manipulators Water striders spend most of their time in the chaotic boundary where air meets water. The air-water interface. Here, a cohesive force called surface tension is strong at work. You may not know it, but water likes to stick to itself. On a microscopic level, the water's surface physically forms an elastic membrane that behaves like a trampoline. If you're small enough, you can jump on this trampoline. But if you jump too hard, you might rip the membrane and fall right through. Boing, boing, snap. Eight, floating like metal? Water striders are heavier than water, so they should sink like a rock but these long legs and flat feet allow the unexpected to happen. Let's go to the lab and play with some paper clips. This red paper clip is metal and it sinks in water, duh. But if I gently place it above the surface, look at that, it floats. I'm not a sorcerer. What's happening here is that the water molecules are clinging together so tightly that they don't allow the paperclip to slip between them and sink. Just for funsies, I bent four paperclips and stuck them together with a single drop of superglue. This shape mimics the anatomy of a water strider, but let's just say my model is inferior to their natural powers. In reality, water striders can actually carry 15 times their own weight without breaking the surface tension. If you have any tips on how to make a better water strider, please share them with me in the comments. Did you know? There are over 1 million insect species known today. The halobates water striders are the only insects that spend their entire life cycle in the open oceans. Incredibly, these ocean striders inhabit over one third of the globe's surface. Seven, hairs that hate water. Under the microscope, you can see that water striders are covered in hydrophobic hairs. Hydro means water, and phobic means fearing. But why exactly do these hares hate water? Well, it's because they are covered in a special oil that repels polar molecules. All oil, including this cooking oil, doesn't like to be around water. If you put a drop in water, it clearly doesn't mix. Instead, it balls up. Oil molecules have no charge, so water doesn't like to be around them. Instead, a water molecule will push oil out of the way 
until it finds as many fellow water molecules as possible to call happy neighbors. This oil-coated hair prevents the water strider from becoming waterlogged. It can slide over the surface like a waterproof surfboard instead of getting bogged down like wet toilet paper. 6. Bug Juice Smoothies As strict carnivores, what do water striders eat? They specialize in capturing any non-aquatic bugs that somehow end up in the chaos of the air-water interface. Dragonflies can sometimes accidentally get stuck when laying their eggs. Beetles or ants could fall out of a tree. Look at this wasp. It doesn't have the proper shape or oily hairs to escape the sticky situation. When a water strider finds one of these half-drowned bugs or a dead bug, it attacks. First, a needle-like proboscis pierces the prey's abdomen. Then, a digestive enzyme is injected. This breaks down the prey's internal proteins into a goo, which can be sucked out like a bug juice smoothie. Yummy! Too bad nature forgot to give this spider swimming lessons. 5. Survival Superpowers Water striders are predators. However, their small size means that they are also a prey item. An especially formidable foe of the water strider is the back swimmer. Back swimmers are their evil mirror imaged nemesis. They operate on the opposite side of the air water interface. While swimming around upside down, back swimmers attack from the bottom up. Birds, frogs, and fish also sometimes try to eat water striders, but Water striders don't make for a very tasty snack. They are little more than bitter tasting hairballs. Lacking flavor is just one of the water striders natural defenses. Safety in numbers? Check. A reaction speed 20 times faster than that of us measly humans? Check. Jumping six times your own height? Check. Six times. That's like... Me, jumping out of a swimming pool and over my childhood house in the same bound. Oh, yee! Clearly, water striders are very elusive, and this fish has learned that attempting to gulp one down directly is futile. It will be easier to follow the water strider to its next victim and steal the meal. In fast moving water, Water striders can even switch off that flashy walking on water mode and turn on a more subtle rowing mode. Ironically, the only thing these athletic aquatic insects can't do is swim. 4. Ripple Detectors Like spiders in a web, water striders have a sixth sense. They can use their front legs to detect the direction of incoming waves. Struggling prey emit rings of ripples that broadcast their location and lead water striders right to them. Water striders are social creatures, and these ripple detectors are also used for transmitting information. By drumming at unique frequencies, ripples can communicate territory, readiness to mate, the presence of food, or the presence of a predator. A water strider population is all networked together and sharing data. 3. Grabbing her eyes? Water striders do everything on water, and that includes doing it. Mating on the water can be a bumpy ride, so the males have evolved a pair of specialized antennas. The antennas are barbed and shaped like spanner wrenches. Unfortunately, they fit perfectly around the female's eyes, and they can be latched in place. Additionally, some males are hyper-aggressive. They often attempt to reproduce with the wrong species, or even with dead bugs that should be seen as food. Come on guys, try it. Think with your brain, not with your dorsal fin. 2. A Deadly Winter 
Watcher Striders give birth to three generations in one calendar year. Right before winter, the surviving females lay eggs on aquatic plants. As the cold weather sets in, all adults either starve, freeze to death, or die of old age. However, when this lily pad dies, it sinks to the bottom of the pond, taking some water strider eggs with it. Since only the top few inches of a pond freeze, these eggs are now safe from any ice down in the muck below. When water temperatures finally warm up in the spring, the water strider life cycle begins. Nymphs are born carnivorous and start eating right away. Only 10% of the population survives to adulthood because growing up involves a struggle for calories. To win the competition, stronger individuals sometimes cheat by cannibalizing their siblings. And one, the enemy of my enemy. Water striders might scare the bejesus out of you from time to time, but stay calm. They don't bite humans, nor do they transmit any human disease. In fact, you should welcome water striders into your friendly neighborhood swamp. These helpful insects actually kill the real enemy, mosquitoes. The World Health Organization estimates that 725,000 people per year die from mosquito-borne disease. Luckily, mosquitoes lay eggs in the same ecosystems that water striders patrol. According to one laboratory study, the average water strider can eat 14 mosquito larvae per day. So, if you see water striders around, count your lucky stars and protect them. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. What do you think about water striders? Would you welcome them in your swimming pool? Let me know down in the comments. If you want to learn about more cool swamp creatures, check out my video on earthworms or the praying mantis. I'll see you subscribers in the next video and thanks for watching Animal Science TV.